Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good to see you, Attorney Kane. Thank you. Uh, could we start with you telling me, from your perspective, from what you do, what's the value of the death penalty? There are crimes which are so horrendous that from my perspective right now, and I've gone through this and I've gone through it many times, there are, there are, are crimes which are so horrendous that the public has the right to have us as prosecutors seek the, seek the highest penalty that the law permits. Now, I've looked at it in that function and that function alone as a prosecutor and, 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 and approached it from that point of view. Now, over theoretically, whether or not we have a value, uh, we have a, a reason for the death penalty, now we're talking philosophy and, and all sorts of different things. I think with regard to human beings being on the face of the earth, there was a substantial amount of our life over the, the era where a death penalty was probably necessary for the survival of civilization. There were probably crimes committed by people that were so horrible. Our human instincts react to certain crimes and they just bring out almost uh, natural instincts, I'd like to kill that person. Uh, whether or not that's good or not, in today's stage it may be very bad. There may be times when that was essential for survival, for survival as a civilization for our people. And, and over the years I'm sure the death penalty had a lot of value. So the question is now whether or not in this state of our civilization with what we have now, does it have value? That's why I said that decision is, is in your hands. So if I understand you correctly, then uh, you're simply defending it because it's the highest form of punishment, not because it's necessarily efficacious, not because it's the morally right thing to do or not, just because it's the highest form of punishment we have. There are studies... There are some studies, and I, I, I cited them. I don't know if I had the names of them, but I remember testifying about it. There are some studies that have shown where the death penalty is actually carried out. There is a drop in, in violent crimes for a period of time. Not but where it's on the book, but where it's actually carried out. There is a drop. Would you now, happen to know that uh, whether or not in those places where those death penalties are carried out and the study suggests what you suggest, if crime in general is... Uh, dealt with in a different way. Do you know if those studies actually disaggregated the death penalty from the way that the criminal justice system works in general? I was because about to, 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 my, to my knowledge, that has not been done. So I, I would ask you. I was about to add that. I don't know the cause and effect, uh, whether the drop in crime rate was caused by the, the fact of the death penalty, but there were studies. I can get some of those studies. Uh, the names of them, I don't have them with me today, but I'm not sure if I gave the names before. I might have. So it may, makes me think I did. There are some studies which you could look at, but they're social science studies, again, and the value of which uh, uh, you, you wonder about. Uh, two years ago, you asserted that the uh, positive impact of the death penalty in your testimony, the positive impact of the death penalty is that criminals will uh, be more likely to plead guilty and accept life imprisonment or a su substantial sentence. My question to you is, if you believe that what the value is in that uh, you can use the highest punishment possible. How does the value also transfer into being able to uh, get a life sentence, which doesn't, which isn't the same as uh, actually using the death penalty? And add to your last response that uh, the deterrence effect would come if it did come from actually applying and using the death penalty. Well, two things. I don't think we should have a death penalty to serve just as a club so we can say if you don't plead guilty, we'll execute you. Uh, that, I, that would be a misuse uh, of the death penalty. When you have, no matter what the highest penalty is, you have to evaluate, a prosecutor has to evaluate it, and this, when you talk about plea bargaining, there are a lot of legit legitimate reasons to negotiate a plea short of the maximum sentence. Uh, there are cases in which I've seen people plead guilty to natural life and agreed to let them plead guilty of natural life for a variety of reasons, uh, some of which is, is, is a whole different variety of reasons. And it gets very intangible and very difficult to say, but, but uh, uh, it's a hard qu question to answer 
right and, and fairly. There are cases where the death penalty might apply if we go ahead and seek it. We're, we'll probably get it, but the process of going through the trial is going to cause a great deal of collateral damage to people who you don't like to be hurt, whether they're witne witnesses, victims, families, or whatever. And you may think, for this reason, I'm going to weigh it, and, and the harm that may be done by going ahead is, is going to be greater than the value of getting the execution and will seek something short of execution. We do that in, you know, sexual assault cases involve a child victim. How much harm are we going to do to this victim by making her testify versus if we don't convict this person, who else is this de defendant going to hurt? Uh, those are hard, hard judgments to make, but you make them on all sorts of cases. Um, I agree with you about uh, your statement about using the death penalty as a club. But it seems to me that one of your other uh, responses two years ago was that uh, what we should understand is that the death penalty is not actually sought in many, if not a majority, of the possible capital felony cases. Uh, in those cases, what do we use the death penalty for? There are cases where, in those cases where it's not sought, there are cases that we look where we believe we can prove the capital felony. There are, and we believe we can prove one or more aggravating factors, but we'll look at the mitigating factors as presented by, to us by the defense if the defense wants to present it to us, and we'll look at that and say, yes, there is a, a mitigating factor, or yes, there's a mitigating factor here which, which either we agree exists or is very likely that a jury will find exists. And because of that, we choose not to seek the death penalty. So where it can apply, your office does not necessarily apply the death penalty. That's correct. Okay. Uh, I also wonder, you talked about how uh, you have to weigh cir certain circumstances, but I know that in the past, uh, perhaps with cases like uh, Mr. Cologne a few years back, uh, the death penalty did apply, uh, and then the Supreme Court intervened, and your, uh, the state's attorney in the area decided not to continue. And so I wonder in a case like that, uh, why one who had sought the death penalty, uh, we're not talking about a different uh, situation, we're talking about the same situation, why it would not apply uh, after the Supreme Court had ruled. To me, uh, if it's applicable, if it's necessary, and I believe the state's attorney in the case said that the jury had made the right decision, it doesn't seem to make sense that this would not carry forward. So if you could talk to me a little bit about that. Why that particular decision was made in that particular case, I'm not too sure. I believe the state's attorney saw either there was something new that was brought to his, his attention. Uh, was this the case in Waterbury that, uh, and there was a co-defendant? It, it was the little girl. Involved. It was the little girl who was. There was some information yeah. that the state's attorney got afterwards that made him rethink uh, the initial decision, and I believe, and he decided not to, not to seek it based on that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And that was a hard decision for him to make because you're right, he did have a, a verdict where the jury came back the first time, the Supreme Court uh, overturned it based on a reason which, which wouldn't have prevented him from retrying the case. But he had to weigh very heavily what was the right thing to do in that situation and he made up his mind at that time that the right thing to do was not to seek it. Uh, Attorney Kane, uh, 